Why are you lying? <laughs> Welcome back to Snatch, Gay Times' original series, where each week we chat with the legendary queens of RuPaul's Drag Race UK. We're on season six, and I'm here with Saki Yu. Saki, it's lovely to see you again. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. And yourself? I'm I'm all right. I'm, I, mean, I mean, this is this is uh, the shit circumstances to be chatting with you again. Uh, I'm I, I'm devastated for you. This is not the the way anyone wants to leave the competition, right? No, absolutely not. But you know, things happen. You just have to deal with it and keep moving forward. How are you now? Fully recovered, I hope. Yes, I am fully recovered. Still, um, you know, putting things in place so that I it doesn't happen again, <laughs> and making sure that it's strong enough to deal with work to keep going and yeah. Can you take me back to that episode, if possible? What happened after you fell? Did you we, did you consult a doctor? It happened in the hotel room. So it happened. And then I kind of kept it to myself, which was probably the wrong decision because I wanted to I wanted to do the episode. Um, but then once it got a little too much, that's when I actually spoke to someone of the Queen team and just was like, okay, um, I think I need to talk to a medic. And then, then that's when, you know, everything kind of happened. Did it take you long to recover? A few weeks, I think. Because, well, the doctors would said that it, I would be able to, like, just walk properly without pain in, like, two weeks. But then it, um, I just, I took extra weeks to kind of make sure that it was fully healed. Was there an open invitation at all for you to return for season seven? Is that under wraps? Will the BBC come knocking on our doors and take us away if we speak about this? <laughs> you will just have to wait and see. I, I'm i going to keep my lips nice and tight with that. And mm. yeah, no, just wait and see. You might, you might see me or you might not. We don't know yet. Mm, mm, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> He's a mere... Uh, I mean, e even though it's a, a pretty tragic situation, you've kept a really good sense of humour about it, haven't you? I mean, I saw your hilarious picture on Instagram. <laughs> In the bathtub, yeah. I mean, you kind of have to laugh about it because it's something so little. Like, it's it, it's a, you slipped in the shower, like, and mm -hmm. that's what took you out. But, um, yeah, and there's no point in me like being upset and moping around and crying about it because it's not going to change things. So why not just kind of laugh about it? Have you thought about monetizing the situation in any way? For example, have you thought about partnering with um, some British shower companies? Well, I've actually bought out my own bath mats. <laughs> so... <laughs> I am monetizing on it. Don't you worry. <laughs> there you fucking go. And can you tell the people who are watching this where we may find said bath mats? Yes, you can find it on You Better Merch on their website under the Sucker You Merch. So just click on that and you'll find it. It's there. <laughs> <laughs> bath mats. Oh, my God. I, I love that. I honestly did not expect you to be like, yeah, I'm already doing it. I'm already doing oh, it. I, I The minute it happened, I was like, Absolutely, I'm not gonna have to bring this out. <laughs> you slipped and you saw pound signs in your head. You were like money. Absolutely, money. yeah. I went. How am I gonna make money out of this? <laughs> well, I, I I am needing a bath mat. So okay, all right. I'm gonna get onto you better merch. Yes, you better. <laughs> if when you inevitably maybe not do possibly return for season seven, you got your talent show number ready. You've got like a safety awareness video. It's like, it's like one of those airline sa safety videos, isn't it? I could do that. <laughs> like how to enter a shower <laughs> and how to safely exit as well. <laughs> so obviously, I'm, I'm sad that you've left this this early because um, I was intrigued to see the season, how you would infuse your Mancunian, Australian and, and Filipino heritage all into one because that mixture is bonkers and I wanted to see more of it. So um what could we expect it from you across the season? I mean, I you would see it within the fashion that I would bring within the wardrobe that I bought as well. But also like even just conversations, like a conversation can go such a long way. Like you saw in episode one with me and Zahira, mm. that conversation has just like spread like wildfire. And 
yeah, like just I've I've got DMs from people going, this actually means so much and I can relate. And it just, it's nice to see someone actually talking about it on such a public platform. That was an incredible conversation. And it, it felt needed, obviously, because we, we haven't had Filipino queens in the franchise before. And there is famously a drag race Asian curse, right? Yes. So it was <laughs> wonderful to see two Asian queens talk about it so openly on television like that. So it's great that you've had such a wonderful response. It's nice that I can be on this public platform and talk about it. And, you know, for the next set of younger Asian queens, they can, it's like a little pavement. We've started it for them. I mean, the Asian queen curse, uh, it feels like it's it's somewhat been broken this year because we've had so many incredible entertainers do well on the franchise, such as Nymphia Wind and Aurora Matrix and Marina Summers. And of course, we can't forget about Drag Race Philippines being one of the best franchises <laughs> ever. Uh, yeah. So what's it like to see this much needed and long awaited Asian takeover? It's amazing to just see it happen now because really it's about time that it's happened and that we all get recognized for what we do in our draft like our art form like we're just, like I said we're not just pretty we can do everything <laughs> in that little rolodex of drag so yeah it's just so nice that curses are being broken and that we're here so and have you noticed that conversation with Zahira have an impact at all in in Manchester specifically because I know that you two spoke about how there's often a mix up in the Manchester drag scene. I'm not gonna lie, I haven't been out in Manchester yet to kind of um see the effect. Um, but hopefully when I do head out on the cobbles, that I do see that we both get recognized for who we are, not just get called the complete opposite drag queen like you know I, I hope that when Zahira is in the village that she doesn't get called Saki anymore that she actually gets called Zahira because she's yeah. Zahira I mean like she said it's so absolutely ridiculous because you look nothing alike and your drag is totally yeah. different yeah absolutely different but you know it, it it is what it is and like you know sometimes you you have to cut like just to get on with the job you kind of just go ah, you laugh it off but really on the inside it, like, it eats you up it does eat you up and you are a seasoned theatre performer, actor, singer, <laughs> <laughs> dancer. So were you aiming this season to take home the win for the musical and the girl group and the dance challenges? Like, tell me about that. Oh, you literally just took the words out of my mouth. Yes, I was absolutely getting, uh, gunning for those wins for musical and girl group because that's all I really trained in. So if I didn't win, oh, oh my I think how would have broken loose. <laughs> All right, well, season seven or UK versus World Three or whatever's coming next. Franchise. <laughs> oh, I wanted to ask you as well about your creation this episode because we didn't get to see it. So, what would that have looked like? Like my sketch. <laughs> um, no, I actually had to. So, as I was making that creation, obviously my knee was starting to flare up and <clears throat> as you can see in the workroom the benches are quite high so when you're sewing you're actually stood so I couldn't really stand on it so I was sat on a, a stool and I couldn't reach the pedal anymore so I was like I have to hand stitch everything so I kind of had to alter things the kind the whole outfit kind of changed really because I was just hand stitching the whole time and it just took forever but I also left it there, so you, no one's ever going to see it. After watching the episode and seeing who the tops and the bottoms were, how do you think you would have placed? Um, to be honest with you, I think I would have just been safe. It's I couldn't compare to House of Zen because their outfits were incredible. No one can deny that. Um, but also, it wouldn't have been as bad <laughs> as um Kiki and Octavia's so I would have been like right in the middle and been like oh yeah it's good you're safe 
I secretly loved what Activa and Kiki's did because they were so camp and ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. <laughs> Why are you lying? <laughs> I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> No, but the, the ET comparison did absolutely oh. ruin me. I was so funny, but also you see it, right? <laughs> I absolutely fucking did. I did see. It. I saw. I saw a side by side on the Twitter, and I was cackling. I was cackling. I loved it. She should have won. She should have won. Yeah, just yeah. for like, I mean, ET is a fashion icon. Yeah, she won for the entertainment factor. <laughs> we do need to talk about uh, Snatch Game. Yes. Um, are you willing to reveal who you would have impersonated? Okay, so, I mean, I had three options. I was prepared. <laughs> okay. But the, the option that I was going to go with it was um, Imelda Marcos. Do you know who she is? I Okay, this is bad. My only, my only reference for Imelda Marcos is on Drag Race previously. Right, Manila. wasn't it Manila on Snap? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoes, shoes. <laughs> but the thing is, I was gonna do her as her older self and just really haggard. Okay. So it was it was just a different take to what Manila did. Interesting. Okay, so again, we'll see this at some point, I assume. Oh yes, you you just have to wait and see. <laughs> what is next for Saki Yu? Of course, other than your soon to be sold out line of bath mats. Um, what's next for me? Um, the world, really. Like, I'm just going to take it as it comes. I'm going to try to be as busy as I can. I'm going to try and see as many people and fans as I can. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to take it as it comes. I'm not, I haven't got anything really planned or lined up at the moment. But yeah, let's just see how, see how it goes. 